The next test I'd like to show you is how you can check run out in a drill chuck. Now I've installed that half inch pin into my drill press, elevated my table. You notice I've only got about an inch and a quarter here. The reason I raised that table so high is when I put this indicator on, I want to make sure that we're measuring as close to the chuck as we possibly can. Now I still got that long tip in and that's not going to work very well in this application. So what I want to do is I'm going to put that back in the case and I've got a wide flat tip. This is the one on the lower left as you look at that tip set from the front. And we're going to install it into the indicator. You want to finger tighten these. You don't want to lock them down too much. And we're going to press this. Okay, we're clearing the chuck by about an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to press that in to give me some clearance out here. I've got a little scrap piece of cardboard, and what we're actually going to do at this point is we're going to come in here, and we're going to clamp this down, okay, I'm using the cardboard to protect the anodizing on the bar. Get this thing fairly close. Make sure I'm aligned. Okay. Okay, we're going to snug that bar down to where we know that indicator is locked firmly in place. Now, in this application, and again, remember to zero your dial indicator. And what you're going to do then is you're going to rotate that drill chuck. And as you run it through a 360 degree rotation, any movement you see on that pointer tells you how much runouts you've got. Now, I've only got a couple thousandths of an inch, which is really pretty good on a drill press of this, size, uh, of this quality. But if you have a problem, you see excessive run out, since these chucks are all pressed on one way or another, you may want to pull that chuck off, clean that spindle shaft, reinstall the chuck, and see if that helps straighten it out. One of the things I want you to notice about the mounting bars, we've got 11 countersunk holes drilled down the top. Now, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to configure this kit to check the, the squaring of the drill table to the spindle travel of the drill press. And to set up for this, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to finger tighten this. I want you to notice at the end of that pin, by the way, is drilled and tapped on one end. What we're going to do is we're going to put that pin in there just to give me an idea where that hole is. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to actually turn this bar over, and we're going to end up mounting that indicator upside down from almost every configuration that you're going to use on the alignment kit. Okay. And what I want to do is put this in here like that, okay? Now, we're going to eyeball, okay, as best we can, where we're going to be making the limits of the table. Now, I'm right at the sixth hole, center hole on this, okay? So, what I'm going to do is take the pin out. I want to make sure I've got the threaded end. One, two, three, four. And we're going to line up and screw that pin right on that screw and snug it down. Okay. Now, I may need to lower my table for this. I'm not sure here. I don't, let me try something here. See if I can swing it down. There we go. Now, one of the things that, that I want you to understand in this test, you don't have to have the indicator perfectly square to the bar or the table, because as long as you're using the same angle, it, it's going to give you this accurate readings both sides. So what we're going to do in this case, come to this side, I'm actually going to tip that in a little bit, okay, lock it down. And I'm going to elevate my table. That ought to work. Okay, once that table's locked, we're going to come over here and we're going to zero that dial indicator. Okay. As we rotate 180 degrees, I'm out about 15 thousandths of an inch. 
the pointer on the dial indicator has gone positive. In other words, I'm above the zero on this side. Now that tells me this side's higher and this side's lower. On drill presses where you have an adjustable table like this, there's going to be a bolt down here under the uh, table that you loosen and adjust it. Now, the thing to remember, and, and let's take a, an even number as an example. Let's say you're 20 thousandths off and we're high on this side. Since we have a center pivot, anything I do going down on this side makes the opposite side do exactly the same thing in the other direction. In other words, if we're 20 thousandths high here and we lower this side of the table 10 thousandths, it'll elevate this side of the table 10 thousandths. And at that point, my drill press table would be perfectly square to the spindle travel. 